Hello, viewers. I went through all of this because I basically sped run it the la or speed ran it the last time, so there's no point in just doing that again. And this, the beginning is really long, so you can just watch the first part if you want to see the story stuff again. You found it! Accompanied by Wall of Angry Water, he came out five steps, went up the stairs, holy shit wave, run, C deck, B deck, ran into people. What the fuck are they doing there? Hmm. Dancer person, silver, lion, pink hair, prince, um, mountain, silver, lion, dancer, or silver, silver, mountain, Jinpei, holy shit, canny. And then Zero is all like, <laughs> Now your game game where you fight for your life. These doors are numbered. You need your wrist fuck things. You've got nine hours to escape. Nine doors. There are nine of you. Nine, nine, nine. Akane slash Kenny. Let's discuss things for like five hours. And look around the place. Since last time, the last two times, we already know a lot more than we did the first time. I'll probably go through the entire beginning, the f this, or the first time like I already did, and then the last time, for the last ending. <clears throat> I've got like a cold or something. Okay, one was Ace, two was Snake, three is Santa, four is Clover, let's just go all over all this, five is Junpei's number, Arcane was six, and Junpei had given her the code name was June, seven was seven, eight was Lotus. That meant that eight of them, including Junpei, had revealed their bracelet numbers. But there was one more, the ninth man, Bird's Nest. Holy shit, threat with knife and whatnot. Put your thing hand on the thingy. Now somebody else come over here and put your hand on the thingy. Now I'll put my hand on the thingy. And I'll run because I'm an idiot. And now he's gonna explode. That wasn't 90 seconds. Anyway. We still haven't done Ace and Lotus, but this really doesn't change anything, so. Ace, Lotus, you think you could give me a hand here? The pun was a little too on the nose, but the mood was still grim. Both Ace and Lotus lifted their left hands silently. He verified, and she followed suit. 5 plus 1 plus 8 is 14, 1 plus 4 is 5. They'd fulfilled the conditions, and let's open. Holy shit, blood splatter. Screaming, fever, and <clears throat> it's already been an hour, so you gotta get this part started. Just don't make the same mistake that that guy did, and you'll be okay. Just, just for the sake of completion or whatever, more than six people can go through. It was something about how more than six people could pass through. No, wait, that was wrong. It was on the tip of Junpei's tongue when Lotus beat him to the punch. All those who winter must leave, and all those who winter must contribute. That's what the letter said. In other words, no less than three and no more than five. Exactly. Or exactly. Snake inclined his head towards Lotus. <clears throat> the ninth man, however. Blah, 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 blah. All right. I went and looked at a walkthrough real quick to see what, like, stuff I had to do to get the ending that I didn't get that requires certain stuff to happen. But apparently, if you get a different ending, then the, uh... <clears throat> what the thing is, is if you get a certain ending, then you basically can't get the coffin ending, and apparently the icon disappears, but I didn't notice that on mine, it disappearing. So, 
<laughs> yeah. So I've got the door layout for this one. It's going to be going through door four again, then door seven, then door one, just to see what happens. Um. Um, eight three six five. Their digital root would be four. Obviously, I'm not gonna play around just for the sake of seeing other options. Just use up slightly more time. Shall we go? So that door five, door four would be fine. That looks like the red. Oh god, what do you think would have happened if, like, in the other one where you go through door five, you don't tell them that the red looks just like, the, or the dead looks just like the red? That could have had something bad happen in it. Go check the room. So much room. Find a way out. Okay. And then let's see if I can remember what to do for this, because I didn't remember to look at uh, my stuff. Like my previous walkthrough. Oh, sorry. Alright. Matches. Yeah, that starts a cutscene. Yeah, I guess I am. Heh <laughs> Jin blushed and giggled. By the way, Jumpy, hmm? how did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? And blah, 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 blah. Um. She woke up on D-Deck. Uh, who could it have been that put them here? They were both in elementary school. Was there anything strange that happened in elementary school? He searched the room and racked his brain for the answer. Huh? What's up? You're turning red. Oh man, is her fever back? Hey, are you alright? You need to lay down for a minute? I I'm fine. I think it's still a little early for that. Huh? Hey, seriously, are you really okay? A la 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 sexual tension. It's a bottle with water in it. This is a bedroom. They probably have it in here because your throat always feels dry when you wake up, you know? My throat's dry, but I think that's because I'm a little nervous right now. Well, we did run a lot, so we're kind of sweaty. Hey, Jumpy, did you want to take a shower together? Whoa! <laughs> Just kidding. Too late to take it back. My brain's already working out the picture. Aw, yeah! Anyway. My throat was dry already. This sure isn't helping. Throat dry. Dick wet. Anyway. Okay, I'll stop that now. Um... It's a display case, but there's nothing being displayed. Oh yeah, a map. Is it a map? Yes, it's a map. Shit's fucking huge. Love about the Titanic. Do you think this boat is the actual Titanic? The actual Titanic? You mean like, slipped through time and ended up here? Before the ship sunk on April 14th, 1912? Huh? What the hell are you smoking? Huh? Did I get it wrong? Junpei grinned and shook his head. 
<laughs> no, no, that's not... I, I mean, come on, slip through time? Seriously? I was talking about the controversy surrounding the Titanic. Controversy? What do you mean? Haven't you heard of it? It's pretty famous, you know. The, the Titanic has a shift sister ship that was essentially identical. It was called the Olympic. Oh yeah, I have heard of that. If I remember correct, the, Oli the Olympic was a ship that had a lot of problems. And the company that owned it didn't know how to get rid of it, right? So they made the Olympic up to look just like the brand new Titanic. And then they sunk it on purpose. That's right. They also took out a huge insurance policy on it before it set sail. That would mean that the real Titanic never sank. Yeah, the ships got swapped. The real Titanic was renamed the Olympic in secret and was used as a passenger ship for more than 20 years. Hey. Wait a minute. Wouldn't that mean it retired in 1935? Huh? Well, yeah, I guess sometime around then, yeah. Well, what happened to it after that? I heard it was dismantled. Dismantled? Then it doesn't matter, does it? Whichever boat the real Titanic was, it doesn't exist anymore. It was either retired and dismantled or sunk in the Atlantic, Atlantic by the curse. But then that would mean that this ship is... Wait! What did you just say? Huh? Sank in the Atlantic because of what? The curse? What do you mean a curse? A curse is a curse. This one is the curse of the Egyptian mummy. Junpei couldn't understand how Jun had maintained a straight face to say that. Supposedly the Satanic... Okay, now it's back into stuff that we've already seen. This is the stuff about Alice. Hmm, that's stupid. I don't buy it. It's true! How can you be so sure? I'm trying to skip this and I can't. That mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. It was a really mysterious, totally unbelievable... What is so unbelievable about it? And now more stuff that we can skip. Stuff how she was frozen... And even above, like, 96 degrees, she stayed frozen. Jumpy, where are you going? Um, I was thinking of going over to Lotus's room. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm just gonna go check up on them. Is there something wrong with that? Well, no. Come back soon. Sure thing. I'll leave the rest to you. Sure, leave it to me. All right, off to the other room. First things first. Not that. Oh yeah, okay. I have to find the shower curtain. Well, this is the display case. Take a look. What all do we have? Matches and a dresser key. Combine. We got the candlestick and the shower curtain. Let's use the candlestick key to open this up. Pull that shit open! God damn it. We got two of the three pieces. Junpei, you got a minute? Here, take this. It looked like a bookmark. It had a four-leaf clover in it. What is this? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sh... Ah, uh, poop. Not that. Why don't you hold on to it? Santa gave him a wry smile. You know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Damn straight. And you... hate those things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but, uh... Junpei tried to figure out how best to phrase what he wanted to say. What does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Santa scratched the back of his ear and looked awkward. Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So a leaf language, I guess. 
Yeah, you could call it that. Call them leaf words. Leaf words. Ah. Junpei looked at the bookmark. Hope, faith, love, and luck. So, yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touch it and give me the creeps. Take the damn thing, all right? Santa pretended to shiver with disgust and shoved the bookmark into Junpei's confused hands. Junpei, what do you want to do? Okay, this is one of the thing, or this is one of the four things we also need to do to get this ending, is to take the bookmark. Decided to take it. After all, why shouldn't he? All right, sure, I'll take it. He shoved the thing into his pocket and gave Santa a last confused look. I'm doing, uh, I'm reading a game out loud for a recording. It's fine. Phew. Man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know. Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. What had happened to Santa, Junpei wondered. How did he become such a bitter person? For a moment, they looked at each other. Well, that's my not my only reason. What? It's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. What? Or what? Worry about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man. That's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages, that kind of crap scared people, but this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-assed number. Not the best or the worst. That's why. What? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. Santa's explanation made no sense. Junpei was even more confused than before. I think between one and nine... Well, actually, I know. Between one and nine, five is the middle number, so... Eh. I guess maybe he doesn't like four, five, or six because those are the middlemost numbers. But... I don't get why he doesn't like five more than four. Or why he ha hates four more than five. Whatever. Santa's explanation made no sense. Junpei was even more confused than before. You play? Play? You mean, like, gambling? Uh, yeah, of course. What else would I mean? In Baccarat, the best po possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grande. But the lowest, most worthless cards, they, the zeros, they call monkeys. Just like the guy in charge of the game, huh? Zero's a monkey. Santa blinked, utterly stunned. Then he began to laugh. <laughs> oh man, you're totally right. The guy who trapped us in here is sure one hell of a monkey. That was when Lotus spoke up. You know, if you think about it, the nonary game is really a lot like Baccarat. Apparently she'd been listening. Of course, it doesn't use any of the stupid digital roots junk. You just drop the tens digit and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Well, yeah, I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. The person who the person who makes nine wins? Did you forget already? Don't you remember what Zero said? The, ex the exit is hidden, but it is there. Seek the exit. Seek a door that carries a nine. So if we want to get off this boat... We have to make a team whose numbers have the digital root of nine. And only the people in that team are going to make it out alive. Of course. That's why it's called the nonary game. What? Huh? You don't know? Nonary means something derived from nine, or base nine. It's derived from the Latin prefix nona, which means nine. While we're at it, the prefix for one is uni. You know, like the unicorn, the horse with the one horn. Two is bi, like binary. Binary means composed of two parts. Three is tri. I'm sure you've had heard that one plen plenty, like trio, trio, triple, and triangle. You get the idea. After that, you've got quart, quintes, sex, sextum, and so on. And of course, the prefix for eight is octo, like octopus. It's called that because it has eight legs. Get it? I see. So then nona means nine. Lotus nodded. So how many of us are trapped on the ship? That'd be nine. And what are the bracelet numbers we have? They go from one to nine. And our time limit? How many hours did we have? Zero said nine hours. And finally, to get out of the ship, we need to find the door with a nine that's hidden somewhere in the ship. By making a team with the digital root of nine. Lotus nodded again. And there you have it. The number nine is everywhere in this game. He's got a real theme of nines for this whole thing. No wonder it's called the nonary game. Somewhere far away, Junpei heard the, crack, heard the creak of stressed metal. It sounded almost like Zero laughing at them. Or the sad, desperate scream of a pig headed to the slaughterhouse. 
I'm gonna go, go close close my door real quick so the sound won't transmit downstairs so much. Reason I live with my mom, I am a teenager. Well, I'm technically an adult, but I'm still in high school. Because, you know, 18 is still senior. Well, I'm sure you don't care. Hold on. So, it's got a line that's thing on it. Let's go. God damn it. Let's go get that. What's up, you going back already? Well, I can't just leave June by herself. <laughs> what, you think you're a natter protector or something? You're creeping me out. Whatever, man, I'm going. I'm going. Oh, it's this one. Let's see if there's anything, huh? This one's a little loose. Hmm, fingernails and blah, 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 blah. God, eh, second time. The exit, Lotus and blah, 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 blah. Well, that was right. Oh, it wasn't, yeah. No, it's fine. I know. Okay. Yes, I did it. There, picture complete. And there goes the frame. What's this? What do you mean, what's this? Pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a hole in the wall. Like a hidden safe or something, you know? Anyway, let's take a look. I think there's something inside. And now, uh, Lotus is going to talk at us. What's with the picture? Morphogenetic fields. Um, theory of telepathy and whatnot. Talks about a study. Um, it looks like... We've already done a dog, and we know that's the correct answer. And according to this thing, over that direction, there's no pad off to the side that I have telling me what... This, there's no penalty for choosing anything. The, there's only like four things, and the next thing that's important is in the next room. So, let's go with Funyarinpa. A Funyarinpa? See? I mean, this totally looks like one. Here and here. Junpei indicated parts of the picture that looked exactly like the other parts. After three seconds of silence, Lotus looked at Junpei. What the hell is a Funyarinpa? What do you mean, what the hell is a Funyarinpa? You mean, you don't know? How the hell would I know? How could you not know? That's that's practically blasphemous. Say you're sorry. Apologize to the Funyarimpa. Goodness, you're such a rude woman. Another three seconds of awkward silence went by. Lotus opened her mouth as she and she shook. Junpei, are you just screwing around? Forget it. I'm just gonna tell you. This is a dog. See you like this. Nose, face, ears, body, leg, legs. She pointed out this stuff, and it started looking like it. It looked as though she had a point. It was a dog. Santa also nodded in agreement. So? Now we know what it's a picture of, but I don't see how that helps us. And now she's going to talk at us about the actual experiment. How people on one side of the country, or that some other country, saw, like, this picture of the dog. Okay, just... I don't know how to explain it, but I know what it is. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure because of the way that I'm numbering these, you've already watched the first one, maybe. Alright, let's go to the hallway. I'll go get June. You guys go head to the door. Okay, roger that. Ever. Hey, Jumpy, where are you going? Oh, uh, I was gonna go get you. I know, Santa told me. Come on, let's go. 
We don't have a blah blah. There's nothing left in this room. I want to get hit out of here back to the hallway. Alrighty then. Yes! It unlocked. Good job, Junpei. Let's go. Okay. So next, we're going to try to figure out these doors and get in this room. Unlocks behind us. Found a map of the B-deck. Seek way out. Alright, so. Looks like you can enter n numbers into it. What countertop? Oh, there's the whetstone. Did I need that for some stuff? Alright, it's going. Do you think this was all part of Zero's plan? Probably. Kinda hard to believe there's a chef on board somewhere. Anyway. Is the other stuff I need. Bottle of oil. Trusty knife. Futility. It's a book. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? Let's go with yes I have, because there's no consequence for that. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. There was a novel that had a bunch of stuff in it that described the sinking of the Titanic before it actually sank. Yeah, that's the one. The title of the novel is Futility. It was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But, I know, I know. I mean, I didn't know the name of the book, but the story was the same, right? It was just like what happened on the Titanic. Yeah. Well, I heard it was all a hoax. A hoax? I heard that the stuff that matched up to the Titanic was so so well was actually added after it sank. Apparently the only thing that was the same originally was that a boat ran into an iceberg and sank. But the novel was punch published in 1898, 14 years before the accident. Like I said, that was the first print of the book. 14 years later, the author heard about what happened to the Titanic. He figured that was his chance. He figured that was his chance, you know. He just went back and changed some stuff in his novel, so that it matched the Titanic exactly. Surprised by Junpei's response, Jun's, Jun seemed rather taken aback. R really? Really. There's no such thing as premonitions or any of that stuff. For a moment, Jun looked very unhappy. More so than Jun th Junpei thought was normal for such a discussion. But it lasted only a moment. With no apparent reason, she suddenly looked up at him alarmed. But, 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 that wasn't the only book that predicted the Titanic sinking. It wasn't? Yep. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Steed. I always want to say Thomas when I see that. God damn. Both, both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Steed wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided and many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Right. I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But, what if Steed had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Automatic writing? Wait, are you... Are you talking about that thing where someone says they're possessed by a spirit? And then... Okay, now I'm able to skip stuff. So... The fuck you talking about, woman? Let's combine that with whetstone. Maybe I'll use the whetstone to sharpen the knife. And now it's sharp knife. I wonder if this is the knife, like, for the knife ending. I wonder if somebody took this knife and used it later. In which case, it would be either Santa, Lotus, or June. Well, I guess Lotus was already seen dead, so it would be either Santa or June. Where the fuck do I go? 
It's a bolt and it's really rusty. We'll see if nothing. That's what we need the ball of oil for. All right. As Junpei walked in the room, blast of cold air washed over him. You're blind? It's a freezer. His teeth began to chatter. She was really fucking cold and she left. And they came in and stuff. All of a sudden, door closed. And the thunderous sound of metal upon metal rang out from behind them. In unison, they spun around to find that the door that they had only recently come through was closed. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Holy shit. Grabbed the doorknob and it was really fucking cold. God damn it, let's get out of here. By the way out. Chicken leg. Dry ice. Picked up the ice with the sleeves to not burn himself. And, um, uh, this is the second thing that we have to do to, uh, for a story thing, is it did strike Junpei's rather odd. I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. It did strike Junpei's rather odd. It didn't seem rather odd to Junpei, and he couldn't help but think about it. June answered, but it can turn into a liquid. Carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure, it won't turn into a liquid, right? That's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating, or sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, this is we That's weird. What is a liquid between 32 degrees and 112? So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? Juni replied with an answer that stunned both of them. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah. Well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Water that freezes at 96 degrees? Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees? Junpei was cold as hell, but this was too interesting to ignore. He did his best to warm up by rubbing his arms and stamping his feet, and then put the question to June. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Oh hey, Nonary! 9. Originally, Ice 9 was, made up, was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So this is the thing called Ice 9. Or the, so is this thing called Ice 9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, the hardness and the structure are completely different. Hold on real quick. So you're saying normal water and this ice nine are like that? Yep. She wasn't finished. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it, and did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in, the, in 1920, some glycerin that was en route to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Naturally, scientists worldwide wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin and began asking for samples of the seed. A seed is, of course, a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be, would be a simple matter. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by the seed crystal, encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, nearby samples did it as well. And it didn't end there. After that day, all glycerin in the world began to crystallize naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like... How, how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. Junpei... This doesn't matter technically, but... Was honestly impressed. It was, in fact, a pretty interesting story. Wow. That's pretty interesting. But, uh... What, what does that have to do with Ice-9? 
To his surprise, it was Santa, not June, who answered. What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened, I mean? A lot like? That would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing, freezing at 96 degrees, man, it'd be the end of the world. Junpei felt that Santa might not be treating the idea of the end of the world with proper concern. At any rate, we're not going to have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. He was right. Junpei shivered. Alright guys, I think that's that's enough of that. I don't think we'd get quite this far. Uh, I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. Seriously. I might go by the name of Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, alright? We gotta find a way out of here. Santa stomped off, clearly doing his best to pretend the cold wasn't affecting him. Selfish, isn't he? Thought Junpei to himself. Still, Santa was right, and it was high time they got back to their search. The story of Ice Knight had of interest, but there'd be time to think about that once they'd gotten out of the freezer. Junpei looked at June, nodded, and resumed his search of the room. This thing's frozen solid. The pork? Yeah, let's take the pork. Because we kind of need that. Okay. Let's see. Combine with frozen ice. Crush the dry ice. Now combine the... Um... Not that. Combine it with the bottle. I'm gonna put these pieces of dry ice in the water bottle. Combine the bottle with the rope. God damn it. Just tie a rope on here. Now let's put the bomb right there. Small chunk of um, dry ice. You know, I wonder what Junpei studied in college. Okay, that's how I look through previous things that have been said is up. Anyway. Three, two, one. Junpei threw the chunk of dry ass as hard as he could. With the same motion, he ducked down in the cellar with J Santa and June, just as... Junpei leapt out of the cellar and ran to the door. Jumpy, the ice on the door, is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. Okay, let's get the fuck out of there. Let me just put my hands on a fucking stove. That seems like a good idea. Uh. Not the guy. Not that. I could have sworn there was a button to just, like, put the item right on there, but I guess not. I guess I'll put this meat on the grill. God damn it. Knife. Yeah! I cut the pork. C plus 10 plus F. See, hexadecimal goes... This is probably what you're supposed to use the thing on, okay. C, okay, so there's 9, and then there's A and B and C, so that's 10, 11, 12, plus 10, that would actually, 10 actually stands for 16, because it goes up to F, which is 15, and then 10, or 1, 0, whatever. So that's uh, 12 plus 16 is 30, wait, no, what the fuck? 28, and then F, which is 15, so 38, 39, 44, 143, yes. Open them doors. Grab that key card. Get the fuck out this room. Oh yeah. Okay. Get the fuck out. Round it. 
That's enough for this episode. Stepped out of the kitchen into a hallway that looked rather familiar. Let's just save right here. Yes. Excuse me. And until next time, people. Peace out.